Okay. Like. Uh, very good evening to all of you from Samir Thurde. We are at Ayuka and uh, bringing you the, you know, the kind of uh, best entertainment and entertainment on a Sunday evening, <laughs> which is uh, good for amateur astronomers. People who are really excited about astronomy and so enthusiastic that they take out time anytime <laughs> you tell them for uh, coming up and following up on some events. So uh, all, uh, at least in, in our in Indian community, we all keep expecting the Geminids, which comes during the clearer months of uh, the winter time. And they're coming up now in a few days, few nights, let's say. And we are all expecting a good shower this time, uh, including the fact that uh, the moon will be uh, quite uh, small and it will not uh, affect the, uh, the, the crucial part, the prime time of the show. So uh, <clears throat> we are there and of course we thought that maybe we should have some expert advice on people who have observed these uh, you know, beautiful events for a long time in their uh, career, let's say. <laughs> and uh, also there as a pastime, as a relaxing time sometimes. So uh, we uh, have today with us uh, Mr. Arvind Paranspe, who's had a, had a long, long interaction with the amateur astronomers in the country and uh, has uh, you know, encouraged a generation of <laughs> new uh, amateur astronomers and including uh, actual professional astronomers also. Uh, he is now the um, director of the Nehru Planetarium Mumbai and of course, uh, we all have been hit by the COVID virus's presence and uh, mostly hit us in <laughs> our activities have been hit. So uh, the planetarium has graciously agreed that uh, they will uh, utilize their uh, uh, planetarium uh, simulation program to simulate the Geminids and give us some uh, special uh, simulations and training event today evening. So uh, with that, I welcome uh, all of you and especially uh, Mr. Arvind Paranjpe, who has uh, given his time to uh, be with us and give us this training. So, uh, welcome Arvind ji, and uh, how are you, and what are your plans for Geminids? <laughs> okay, thank you so much, Samir, for inviting me. I almost feel looking in the background, I almost feel back in Ayuka, <laughs> and uh, the room is so familiar. That's yeah. a joke, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay. So, uh, friends, uh, there was uh, some 20 years ago, um, we, we, it, it all started uh, with the Leonide going to peak uh, about 20 years ago. And uh, at Ayuka itself, we started this activity much before uh, many of you, I mean, some of you were two kids at that time. We started that. And the uh, idea was to actually observe meteor showers uh, scientifically and uh, learn ourselves how to observe the meteor showers. At that point in time, the internet wasn't there or it, it had just come, but the point was that we were getting the uh, information downloaded. There was no interactive uh, sessions or online sessions like this. Yeah. And uh, so we had to depend upon downloading the data and most of the data was downloaded from IMO site but most, almost everything was downloaded from IMO site. And we went through a good lot of practice session and uh, observed the Leonite shower. Now, now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to share some of our experiences in mean, what we did and uh, how we uh, went around observing the meteor shower. And at that time, uh, with the chairman of public outreach committee, and who is now uh, the director of IUCA, uh, Professor Shomak Rai Chaudhary, he very strongly supported a small booklet, which is called Wish Upon a Shooting Star, that uh, almost sort of sums up the uh, uh, the uh, observation of uh, observations of meteor shower. Now, uh, something which I would like to impress upon you, and uh, um, when you talk to others also, you should say that, because you might have seen that every time there is a meteor shower, there's a nice uh, article in newspaper. And then everybody runs, either they call you or uh, call us saying that we want to see or we want to observe the shower and uh, where to observe from, where to, uh, where we should go and so on and so forth. 
and by and large everybody comes back disappointed the reason is that uh, even at the peak i mean uh, leonide that year uh, 89 or something leonide that, that year was a beautiful shower large number of meteors no doubt about it but uh, normally if you say uh, like for example this meteor shower has uh, zenithal hourly, hourly rate i will explain that what it means zenithal hourly rate is 120 meteor what it actually means is in the morning you may remember you heard uh, that meteor appear to come from a particular point in the sky and that is because meteor these shower meteors are debris of a comet so a comet which passes through it leaves large number of small particles and these particles when they enter into the earth's atmosphere they ablate they uh, melt on top and then uh, produce so much of heat that we see them as a bright uh, spark bright light now uh, these uh, at the best like gemini it is something like 120 meteors per hour now 120 meters per hour sounds very good or sometimes even say one meteor in uh, uh, 60 seconds also sounds very good but then you close your eyes and wait for two meteors in uh, 60 seconds that becomes a very long period of time very long period of time but it has its own uh, uh, give out, okay? And it's a, it's a very pleasuring, uh, enjoyable activity because you do not need any telescope or anything. And also remember that if you do a, a very scientific kind of observations, uh, you actually contribute to the international database, okay? Because these meteor showers, as we said, that they're the debris of comet. So, uh, uh, so uh, by observing regularly these meteor showers, you can actually think about uh, or you can talk about the uh, what kind of debris that comet might have left behind. And uh, uh, if there are new shower that you see, then what could that comet be and so on. So what I'll do is now I will share um, a screen, uh, my screen, where I, we have, I have listed out uh, uh, a few... Uh, I, I made some document. Unfortunately, I could not do the PowerPoint presentation, but here is the document. I talk about these things one by one, not everything, but I will quickly run through and remind you about uh, various activities, uh, about, about what you should do and what you should not be doing. Okay, so here the peak is on uh, 15th of December at 6.20 in the morning. So early morning of uh, 15th of December, uh, just before the sunrise, the shower is going to peak. So if someone is from the eastern side of uh, Mumbai or Pune, where we are talking from, for them, the sun would rise nearly a, a one hour before. So they will be slightly missing the peak. They will be just at the time when the peak will be at, uh, I mean, uh, really, uh, since the sun, uh, sun would rise by about uh, uh, 5.45, 6 o'clock in uh, Pune and Mumbai. So uh, before the peak starts, uh, we will be having um, a bright light. Around. Now, one thing about this uh, meteor shower, which I uh, should highlight, and that is that uh, uh, same morning, from Indian time, same morning, there's also a total solar eclipse which is going to take place. So people have been talking about whether you would see some meteors during the total solar eclipse which is taking place in the southern part of um, uh, Southern America. Well, uh, leave that aside. Uh, what this uh, Gemini meteor shower, uh, shower is, that it is a slow, medium, fast, slow, medium, and slightly fast meteors. So they actually appear to kind of glide across the sky, okay? And their speeds are something like 35 kilometers per second. And uh, something which you should uh, remember, and that is that when we, uh, we are looking at uh, looking for the shower, you should not look at the radiant, but something like 30 degrees away from the radiant. And I would actually invite you to note down this particular website, at least skytonight.wordpress.com, where under this section we have listed out the how to observe and a lot more information is available under this section. But let me uh, quickly go through the, uh, some of the points in this section. And that is the selection of site. 
So if you're looking for looking to go for uh, observation of uh, meteor shower, then think about a place which is 40 to 50 kilometers away from a major city, so that you are uh, in the dark surrounding. As you know that in uh, in city, the uh, uh, bright sky would sort of uh, will not allow you to see the fainter uh, meteors. Okay, so you should look for the bright sky. Then cloth is a very important issue in the uh, meteor shower observation. Uh, wear warm clothes. We have always been telling people that um, uh, always wear shoes because we have seen a number of times that people come with uh, wearing a pair of chapels or sandals or something. So you are in the night. So wear a pair of shoes, canvas shoes or whatever, but wear proper shoes and keep your feet uh, warm. Because it, uh, as the night progresses and when your feet become, start becoming cold, it, it actually uh, distracts you. So have a um, uh, warm socks and shoes is important. Then one important factor which I would like to stress upon is that food and drinks. Okay. Uh, instead of having a messy, uh, see, we have seen in the uh, past that uh, uh, people would carry uh, with them uh, some food for the night and uh, food for, uh, for food in the night. And what they would carry is sometimes rice and dal and sambar and things like that. So our suggestion is that carry either stuffed parathas, sandwich, possibly idlis, but avoid everything that is oily. Don't take rice with you because it makes you feel sleepy uh, and uh, carry enough of drinking water. Okay. Uh, because on the spot, you may not get it and may water is important uh, entity in this. Then carry about half a liter of milk per person and it's you sweeten it with, um, with sugar or drinking chocolate or if you do not like to add anything into that, it's perfectly fine. But it should not be hot and uh, it should not be um, too cold. It should be just warm enough for you to sip it once in a while. Okay. And then avoid drinking tea or coffee. I think this is a standard um, uh, conception or other people standardly feel that in the night when you are observing, you should have hot tea and coffee to keep you awake. See, coffee and tea does make it, I mean, they're simulate, uh, simulate all right, uh, stimulating um, agents all right, okay, but it has its own problem and uh, it, it, it sort of uh, makes it, the, you don't see the fainter meteors. And uh, then a big no to alcoholic drinks for yourself and for others. Absolutely no alcohol that you should carry with you. So basically warm milk, which you can sip it once in a while. Then uh, you have insect repellent because the place you go, there might be some insects, uh, particularly mosquitoes. So you should have that. Then you need light, one bright, one reasonably good light, where, which you can find your way through. But then later on, you would need a red, a red torch with a red gelatin paper, a medicine, if you are asthmatic or something, then you should carry medicine. Then paper and pencil, you can all check it up on the website, but these are the uh, actual pointers that I'm uh, trying to share with you and running very quickly. Now, uh, internationally, we have seen that uh, mostly Europeans and Americans, they, uh, they actually observe uh, individually. Uh, but here we found that going into pair for observations of meteor seem to be uh, very fruitful and uh, quite yielding. Now, in this case, you find these two people, young children, uh, they have actually posed for the um, uh, picture. They're not the actual observation, but they are posed for the picture. See, you can see that they're wearing warm clothes, uh, warm gloves. Now, what we do here is that uh, we go into pair. One person observes and second person actually takes it down. So what you do is that you go in a pair and uh, then you um, uh, uh, take roles. Uh, one is observer and one is a recorder, okay, uh, who takes down the observations. And every time you see a meteor, you just tell your uh, part that, okay, this is a Gemini and this is a Gemini of magnitude one or magnitude two, or if it is a bright one, magnitude minus one, whatever, and your uh, partner takes it down into the log sheet. You will find um, sample log sheets on this particular site. Uh, 
and also you should visit the international meteor organization site because they have a online observing form but online observing form you will not be filling up while you are observing so you need to record it on a some sheet of paper which you will have it's a pdf file which you can download it and uh, record the data now something which uh, we have always maintained uh, during our observing sessions and that is that um, uh, no one no one absolutely shouts during the observation sessions which are going on the shouts in the sense that oh i saw this meter this meter this meter no you should not be doing that you should silently uh, take your observations if you are going for a serious observing run if you are going for a casual thing then you can go away uh, wherever you want to go and then you can have a gala time yourself but if you think you should contribute then you should never tell you should be very silent about it should not get extremely should not get excited and you only have to tell your partner that note down um, okay this is a shower meteor this is a sporadic meteor and so on and so forth if you see color you can also mention a color in it though in the morning we have heard that um, uh, color is not very important but uh, having uh, because you are observing it and if you see a color particularly if it's a bright one bolide kind of a thing you might as well make a note of it um, that note uh, may be useful or may not be useful in future but if it is going to be useful then you have it uh, recorded then uh, we come to um, uh, uh, having a good watch now this good watch is not uh, is now has become redundant because every mobile has a very accurate watch now this particular paragraph is not very important but it was important then uh, it's not important then lastly sleep now uh, this is a new moon night uh ne uh no, next day is the uh, total solar eclipse so you would think that ah it's a great opportunity so a uh, first night of the uh, first night i will observe because i have not observed through my telescope for such a long time so i will observe and then i will go into the meteor shower observations if you are serious about meteor shower observation then please don't do it you need as much relaxation time as is uh, necessary uh, as much relaxation time as you can get so don't do that actually once you go to your observing site and you have you are comfortable simply try and get a good sleep till about midnight uh, and then once you wake up then you identify uh, the shower area now here i have uh, it's there on the website so we have drawn these two circles the inner circle is uh, i think 30 de inner circle is 20 degrees and outer circle is 40 degrees radius centered on the shower uh, or uh, shower radius and the numbers that you see here are the magnitude so the magnitudes are always given in uh, without decimal point in uh, and in this case it is given in the three digit so it if it is 0.80 what it means is 0. Uh, sorry 080 means 0.80 is the magnitude of this particular star aldebaran or if you see this uh, origa it is 0.24 it's its magnitude now this particular star which you see here it is 2.99 so it's a nearly third magnitude now why uh, we are giving you this is that when you are observing make a note of how the star appear bright okay how the stars appear bright and then if you see a meteor of that particular brightness you can record that the magnitude of record now these are generally very approximate but when we do it with a large number then it evens out and you have a very good data now having said that let me come back to the uh, zenithal hourly rate what it the zenithal hourly rate is uh, tells you is that if the radiant is right overhead then you are going to see about 120 meteors per hour but as the zenith distance that is the zenith is the point which is right overhead and the point which is close to horizon is 0 degree um, uh, or actually 90 degree from zenith so this is called the zenith distance so that is zenith distance of horizon is uh, 90 degree so from zenith to about 66 once you go to 60 degrees or plus then your magnitudes decreases very rapidly and therefore the number of meteors that you are going to see is also going to be less so it is not that when you see this 120 meteors you can see per hour it's not that 
it is you are likely to see less uh, meteor than that that is one uh, also uh, you should uh, remember that the meteors become bright between these two regions sometimes they go very far so how do you identify which one which one is uh, which one is uh, um, uh, which one is uh, uh, sorry I, i'm sorry i got a little bit stuck uh, which one is a uh, gemini and which one is sporadic so if you see a meteor like this and if you trace it back and if it goes to this point then it is most likely the uh, gemini but if you see a meteor which goes like this then it's a sporadic one now here also you have to remember two things if the streak is very small like this here or like this then it is gemini okay but suppose you see a streak from here which is just like this and even if you stretch and it goes to gemini it is not a gemini uh, meteor it is some other meteor because as it comes from a radiant if the streak is short and close to radiant then it is gemini sometimes you will also see a long streak like this which is starting right from the gemini actually that meteor must have started from this region and by the time it came over here it had become bright so again if the streak is very long and it is close to the radiant then it is not a gemini or it is not a shower meteor you should remember these two things always uh, when you observe the third thing here is that we said that zenithal hourly hourly rate is 120 but if you are looking at a particular direction say suppose you have taken a procyon or say beetle uh, bellatrix or uh, aldebaran as the, the direction that you are watching so this 120 meteors which are scattered over here you will be getting only in this particular region say about 120 degrees is the field of view that we have so in that region only you will be getting so the number will eventually come out to be much smaller lastly uh, i have always noticed and everybody has noticed is that that when you come out you also say that how many meteors i saw see this is not a competition between you and your friend or a colleague that observing uh, noting down the meteor is completely dependent upon your eyesight and so in order to make that as a uniform uh, number uh, or uh, getting the uh, correct zenithal hour, hourly rate what you have to also do is before you start you have to get the limiting magnitude of the sky and limiting magnitude uh, is again uh, what we, what is done in limiting magnitude is let me go back to this particular thing uh, this particular site there are regions where uh, you have to identify three stars in a sky in a in a triangle okay and count the number of stars which are seen in that triangle and uh, there is a direct relationship between number of stars that you saw and the limi limiting magnitude of the uh, the uh, limiting magnitude of the sky so the important one second let me just read it out to you the important thing is that um, uh, in a minute you might see instead of uh, 2 meteors 1.4 meteors or um, less than that that you should remember because of zenithal hourly rate it is 120 second thing is there is no competition between you and your neighbor uh, someone might have seen large number of meteors a few meteors more than you but that's perfectly fine or you might have seen some meteors more than someone else but that is no big credit to you it is just a, a dependent on your eyesight and thirdly uh, never never shout because you will distract your partner in uh, making the observations because moment you see oh i see meteor in that direction then your partner might turn its gay his or her gaze in that direction and miss out the meteor which that person is say, supposed to have noted it down now with this if uh, some more point comes to my mind uh, i will say that but uh, what i am going to do now is that uh, i will run a simulation of a meteor shower uh, using a very powerful uh, digital program which is called the um, digistar 6 it's a planetarium program and in this program the first few minutes will generally get the idea of the sky okay then what we will do is we will show you for a minute or so uh, by in artificially increasing the rate of uh, gemini shower so that you will get some idea as to which one is gemini and which one is not then 
for a minute or so we will all, we will look at the uh, uh, actual rate actual rate of 120 uh, meteors uh, per hour you will get that feeling and lastly uh, after that minute or so we will move the time ahead and come back to morning next day morning that is morning of the um, 15th of uh, december and after that for next half an hour to 40 minutes what i am going to do is we are going to leave what we are going to do is we are going to leave the screen on with a radiant uh, uh, sorry with a shower rate of 120 meteors now uh, i request all of you that once this is done when we start the uh, meteor shower thing once it is done maybe what you could do is you can switch off the light and uh, adjust the brightness of your screen so that it is just perfect for you and uh, then look at for half an hour that will give you some experience as what will happen at the actual uh, observing session <laughs> and uh, while doing that we have ad adjusted the sky in such a way that you have approximately uh, 90 to 95 degrees or actually about 100 degrees field of you so even though it may look circular um uh, screen on your mobile or your computer but it is just about um, 100 degree plus area in the sky and this is what you are likely to see and uh, uh, here we have uh, used the ideal situation that is the uh, uh, absolutely clear sky no clouds and nothing very dark sky but in practice you may have a situation where there are thin clouds are passing by or things like that so i would request all of you to one to read this particular uh, document which we had done and before i shift i will also i think i have taken a lot of time samira i'm so sorry about it uh, and last point is that uh, there is a radio uh, radio uh, observations also can be carried out but i will not touch that point here uh, and we will put up a page So Samir I think I should stop I really have taken uh, sure, too much sure. of your time no no worries about okay. that and so uh, I think I'll stop here and whenever you tell me uh, whenever you tell me uh, I will uh, uh, start the uh, DJ Star 6 uh, section no, no worries about that uh, Arvind uh, we are all listening for this and uh, so we we can uh, now shift actually so what I'll be doing is I'll be signing out of this uh, session and the rest of the session will be just the screen uh of uh the you know the circular sky as you when you when you lie down you see the sky as a circle not as just like a huge dome so uh you so you do that and you look at this uh, view with the uh, uh you are in branch pe and uh, go through the training i will just uh, stress that uh, those who are really serious should come back to this video bring their friends back to this video if you want and uh, pick out random chunks of time uh, between you know finishing of our conversation here and the rest of the next uh, half an hour or 45 minutes and uh, you chunk a piece uh, you know pick a piece of uh, that data and then just randomly uh, try to identify and classify your meteors uh, give um, according to what uh, starting prize based told you so i'll sign off now and uh, we'll continue just hold on with me next i need some 30 seconds to make the shift of uh, uh, screens so um, So goodbye to you all, and we'll see you next week uh, on Sunday morning, eleven o'clock, with uh, Dr. Peter Jensikens uh, doing a talk on the on geminids and other meteor showers in India. He'll also tell us about how to do more advanced stuff. So bye for now, and uh, see. You. Has it started coming in? Not yet. Not yet. Again, again. कुछ तो आ रहा है इसके भी ट्वेंटी सेकेंड्स यस आई कैन सी समथिंग बट द स्क्रीन इज प्रॉब्ली लो सो दैट स्क्वेर इज लो we can't wait to see you so you can speak to the audience they can hear you not me okay.
it is there it is there yes okay so should i should i start the session it is there it is there okay yes yes it's visible now yes please start uh, i will remind you if you have a better connection ka ho please usko on kar lijiye kyunki wo bahut slow ho jayega ha abhi on kar liya but i realize that this is the time when wait yeah okay so i have started the streaming and i play the video atharva shall we shall we shift to zoom in that case otherwise kya karte hain because the stream is really slow Anyway, it will be the same problem. <laughs> Now here is the caster, and this is the location of. Uh, Atharva, can you tell me, or you can come on mobile and talk to me if you. You see the sky moving now? Not really. We are now at eleven. Uh, yeah, it's, it's buffering. It, it's showing the geminity no, on the slide. Video is buffering a lot. But it's it's happening. I mean, things are happening. Only they are a little slow and low resolution. That's that's the thing. This was not Gemini. It was sporadic. This rate is increased. Okay, these two were Gemini. These two were again were Gemini. You saw the small streak. This one Gemini. This one is again one Gemini. I mean, we are not seeing. Uh... Thing is seen because last two were the, they were not Gemini. I think if it is meteor spur hour. and our region is this probably you can take this particular star uh, it's not capella it is that uh, in, in the uh, okay and here is your aldebaran so one of these stars you can say actually not uh, this aldebaran you can say because milky way will also affect a little bit so now let us be very silent for next uh, it is 637 and uh, we can go up to 7 o'clock is what i was told so i'll be silent now I won't say anything except that was gemini that was gemini this was not there was one here which was sporadic this was sporadic you saw the streak going like this it's a sporadic
so there was one faint which went here this was gemini faint one which was what that probably would have been out of your vis visual limits you have to concentrate only in this region this was in geminid okay now i am going to remain silent for next 20 minutes
okay friends hope you got some flavor of uh, observing a meteor shower uh, shower uh, might have noticed that there were some uh, shower meteors and sporadic meteors so i wish you all the best this is just about 20 minutes of uh, trial run that we have given you and before uh, i stop i would like to thank uh, first of all uh, mr samir dhurade who is in charge of the public outreach program of ayoka and his colleagues uh, uh, sneha and atharva pathak uh, who has played such a cru uh, crucial role in uh, bringing it particularly atharva who has uh, provided the technical backup support so i thank you very much and soon i think this will be the link for this video will be available so you can do some more practice session and lastly just to remind you that uh, next week again we have one more uh, talk in the morning uh, for which uh, you might have, you would have seen the advertisement so please joining the, and uh, for this uh, for the time being now i sign off thank you very much good night and have a great time observing this shower goodbye